Whenever we have a diode circuit where more than one diode is involved, it's usually difficult to determine the operating state of each diode. So the way we approach a problem like this is we assume a certain state for each diode. Uh, let's say both of them are on, both of them are off, or one's on and the other is off. Um, and we can go ahead and analyze the circuit under this assumption. Now, whenever we have a certain assumption, there will always be a corresponding effect on the circuit. For example, if a diode is off, it'll be replaced by an open circuit. If a diode is on, assuming the constant voltage drop model, it'll be replaced by a constant voltage drop. Uh, in our case, we'll use 0 0.7 volts as the constant voltage drop. So, uh, we have a question here that asks to, to determine the conduction state of the diodes, as well as uh, to determine the value of V. So, if you pay attention here, V is this value here, so it's the, di uh, it's the voltage uh, after the 10K uh, resistor. So the voltage between uh, the diode D2 and this 10K resistor. Um, the voltage of that node with respect to ground. So now how do we uh, begin a problem like this? Well, I guess we can start with the simplest um, approach. And so what we'll have is, in general, we'll have D1 and we'll have D2. So these things, uh, D1, D2, these diodes, can either both be off, they can uh, both, well, let's say one is off and the other is on. Now the other is on and the other is off. And now both are on. So these are the possible conduction states. Um, and what we'll usually do is we can start from this off-off model, because I guess it's really the simplest one to be able to uh, check, because if it's off, you can just replace the diode by an open circuit. So let's begin by assuming that the diodes D1 and D2 are both off. Now, obviously our circuit is going to change a little bit. Um, so what does it exactly change to? So we still have this ground node. We'll have an open circuit here where this diode D1 was before. We will have this resistor is still there. This D2 will be replaced by an open circuit. We'll have our positive supply, and we will have still our uh, 10K resistor here. So this is 10 kilo ohms. This is still 5 kilo ohms. This voltage here is plus 10 volts. This voltage here is minus 10 volts. And now we have these two voltages, VD1 and VD2. Bearing in mind that we also have this voltage here, which is with respect to ground, and we call it V as defined by the problem. So now what we need to do is in order for this assumption or this state to be valid, there are two conditions that must be met. That is VD1 must be less than 0 0.7 uh, volts and that VD2 must also be less than 0 0.7 volts. Now this is in the case where we're assuming a constant voltage drop model of the diode in that if it's on it'll be a voltage source of 0 0.7 volts if it's off it's zero but this 0 0.7 is compared here because what we have is uh, the condition is that if this voltage is greater than 0 0.7 the diode will be on if it's less than 0 0.7 it'll be off so essentially what we have to do now is we have to analyze this new circuit that we have here and we have to make sure that these two conditions are met okay so if we just look at it based on regular or traditional uh, circuit analysis, we will find that VD1 is going to equal 0 minus, and I'm going to define this point here. Let's call this one here VB. Okay, minus VB. Now, seeing how this circuit is open on this side and it's open on this side, no current will travel through this resistor. Therefore, there will be no voltage drop across this resistor here. Therefore, this minus 10 volts will appear across uh, the terminals here. So VB is going to equal minus 10 volts. Therefore, this is going to be 0 minus minus 10, which equals 10 volts. And this is VD1. So now right away you see that VD1 is 10. However, we said for this assumption to be valid, VD1 had to be less than 0.7. So right away, we know that this assumption is actually wrong because we assumed that the voltage across the diode D1 would be less than 0 0.7, meaning it would be off. 
However, when we actually determined the voltage across the diode D1, we found that VD1 is equal to 10 volts. This is definitely not less than 0 0.7 volts. We can do the exact same thing for VD2. However, you really don't need to at this point because you've already proven it for VD1, but suppose we chose to use VD2 first. What would that look like? You'll see here again we have this open circuit here. Therefore, this positive 10 volts will appear across this positive terminal of the VD2, and this minus 10 will appear at this negative terminal of VD2. Therefore, VD2 is going to equal 10 minus negative 10. And so this is going to be 20 volts. This is even greater than VD1. So this one is also not satisfying our conditions here. So this assumption is wrong. Now what do we do? We can go ahead and we can assume one is on and one is off. Um, typically, I, the approach I usually prefer to use is to assume both are off, both are on, and then I'll pick one of the one states in between where one is on, one is off. So I'm going to go ahead and assume that both of them are on or both of them are conducting. So let's assume both are conducting. Now, of course, we have to redraw our circuit. So what does our circuit look like now? Our circuit will we'll still have this ground plane here or node here, and we will have now a voltage. Well, I'm going to replace it using a battery. You could use a constant voltage source. You can use a battery. Uh, it really doesn't make a difference. As long as you know there's a voltage drop there, you have this resistor is still there. Now in this branch as well, we have this voltage source, and we will have that resistor is still there. This voltage is still V, so I'm going to call this plus minus. This is still V. This is 10 volts. This is minus 10 volts. This here is 10 kilo ohms, like we said before. This is 5 kilo ohms. Now these two voltage drops are new, so I'm going to call this one 0 0.7 here. And I'm going to call this one 0 0.7 volts here. So this is across this, and this is across this. Uh, we will also define this point as VB, just for the purpose of analysis. Now, the condition to check here is different. In the previous case, you'll notice, we checked that VD1 and VD2 were less than 0 0.7. That was because in order for the diode to be off, the voltages across the diode must be less than 0 0.7. However, if a diode is to be on, the condition changes. What does the condition change to? The condition is that ID1 must be greater than 0, and that ID2 must be greater than 0. Now, what's ID1 and what's ID2? ID2, we'll call this one here because we called this diode D2, and we'll call this diode, uh, current here ID1. Therefore, the currents through the diodes must be greater than zero. This we know from the theory of the diode, that the current can only flow in one direction. Therefore, this current must be positive. Now, again, for purpose of analysis, I will call this current here I3. So I essentially have to determine these three currents in order to verify that this model, uh, or this assumption, is, is valid. Now, let's go ahead and find I3 first. That's probably the simplest one. Well, no, let's start with VB. So I have VB is going to equal 0 minus 0 0.7. So what I've done there is I've started at this ground here, I've dropped 0 0.7 volts, and I have VB is equal to that voltage. So VB is going to equal minus 0 0.7 volts. This is VB. Now that I have VB, I can find I3. So I can say that I3 is going to equal VB minus negative 10 divided by 5. VB is 0 0.7, or minus 0 0.7, uh, and this is going to turn into plus 10, and this is over 5. So if you actually calculate this, you'll find that I3 equals 1.86 milliamps. Now again, I'm assuming 5 here is 5 kilo ohms. This is a convention um, of, of electronic circuits. If you haven't already, check out the video on conventions for electronic circuits and the conventions or the things that we'll be using in, in this uh, set of videos for electronics. Uh, we mention a lot of those uh, these type of ideas there. So currents are always in milliamps, voltages are in volts, and resistances are always in kilo ohms. So now I have I3. I can also find ID2 now. How do I find ID2? I say 
10 minus this voltage drop minus VB, which is the other voltage drop, divided by 10, and that'll give me ID2. So ID2 is going to be 10 minus 0 0.7, which is the voltage drop due to this diode here, um, minus VB. VB, we said, is minus 0 0.7. And this is going to be divided by 10. So you'll see, this is convenient. We have minus 0 0.7, and this minus minus will turn into plus 0 0.7. So this is simply 10 over 10, which is 1 milliamp. And this is ID2. Now, how do we find ID1? There's nothing, there's no actual resistances there, so it's difficult to determine it using any sort of Ohm's law approach. However, what we can do is we can use KCL. So if we say KCL, at VB, what do we get? We have ID1 coming in, we have ID2 coming in, and that is equal to ID or I3 because I3 is leaving. We know I3, we know ID2, we can find ID1. So ID1 is going to equal I3 minus ID2. Now that is just going to be 1.86 minus 1, which is 0 0.86 milliamps. Now, we go back to our conditions. Are these two conditions met? ID1 has to be greater than 0. ID1 equals 1. This first condition has been satisfied. Now we check ID2. Sorry, this was ID2 we checked here. ID1 is checked below. ID1 is 0 0.86, also greater than 0. This condition has also been satisfied. Therefore, our conduction states here that we've drawn in this circuit is valid. Now, the since we found the conduction state, we need to find V. So find V. Now, how do we find V? V is going to be simply 10 minus the voltage drop across this 10 ohm resistor. So V is going to equal 10 minus 10 ID2. So this is going to be 10 minus 10 times ID2 was 1. So we get zero volts here. Now, you, this, you should notice that this is a sort of fluke. This is not always going to happen. Um, it's not always going to equal zero. I mean, whenever you have a, a solution that equals zero, it's usually a little questionable because, you know, numbers in problems usually equal some, either some really long decimal number or something silly along those lines. Um, but what we have in this case is, is a zero, and uh, that's totally fine. Should just should just note that this doesn't always happen. Um, another thing I should point out is that we assumed first that both were off, and then we assumed that both were on, and we got it. This doesn't mean that turning both of the diodes on is always going to work. You'll see in the next uh, video that I have on this type of circuit, what I've done is I've pretty much reversed these resistors, and the results are a little different. And in order to find out uh, which states we have to use, we literally, we literally go through the uh, same procedure and we assume states and we turn diodes on and turn diodes off and we're able to determine the actual conduction states. So that's it for this question. So we have V equals that and then we have uh, both diodes are on. And so there you have it. That is the solution to the question. So I hope you found this video useful. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button so you'll get notifications as soon as we post videos online. And other than that, I'll see you in the next one.